So he spoke a parable unto them on this wise, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaks not unto man but unto God, for no man understands him, albeit in the Spirit he speaks mysteries unto the Father. Even though you give thanks well, the other is not edified. Praying always, with all manner of prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto, with all perseverance for the saints. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, make your request known unto God. And the peace of God that passes on understanding will keep and guard your heart. I would that all men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath, no doubting that first of all, prayer, supplication, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, for rulers, and all that be in authority, that we may lead a peaceable and quiet life in all godliness and honesty. Pray without ceasing, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. For the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be ye sober and watch unto prayer. These and many more are some of my favorite scriptures of prayer. Now, this is not to impress you by reciting all of these scriptures and not to tell you the importance of prayer. But I just wanted you to know that there are many scriptures in the Bible that admonish us to pray for one reason or the other. I could do a video on the importance of prayer and if you want me to do that, please let me know in the comment section below. But today we're focusing on how to build a healthy culture of prayer or better put, how you can cultivate certain habits that will make you a more effective praying person. My name is Tosin Babalola. I like to talk faith, personal leadership, design mentorship, and revival. Have you ever tried to build a sustainable praying lifestyle? Are you struggling trying to pray for longer periods of time? Or are you literally just finding it difficult to remain consistent in prayer? That is what this video is all about. So let's just get right into it. Welcome back. Show me a revival that could not stand the test of time. And I will show you a revival move that was not burst in prayer, nor sustained in prayer. Now, it is very important for those of you who intend to strategically position yourself for the coming move of the revival to learn how to build a sustainable praying culture. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you 14 tips on how you can build a healthy and sustainable prayer life. Number one, you need to have a prayer time. This could be done during your devotion and it could be early in the morning when you wake up. But for other people, you may want to add an additional slot to your regular devotion. So say, for instance, you have a nine to five, but you make up your mind that out of your 30 minutes or one hour break, you're going to dedicate 15 minutes for prayer. And you're going to make up your mind that when it is time for you to go on break, you will definitely apportion 15 minutes for your prayer. So your break time can be 3 p.m. You know that from three o'clock to 3.15, you will be praying. Or it's 12 noon, then from 12 noon to 12.15 p.m., you will be praying. Stick to this, make up your mind to make it happen, and you will find yourself praying more and praying better. Number two, you need to have a prayer place. You need to have a separate place where you call your prayer closet, your prayer room, or your prayer location. So for some people, it's a prayer walk. You walk from a particular point to another point on a regular basis, especially during your prayer time. For some people, it could be in their car. Whatever place you choose becomes your prayer altar. It becomes the place where your spirit becomes attuned to the spirit of God. It becomes the place where God will from time to time even come to meet with you as you fellowship with him. So find that place around you. It could be in your closet at home. It could be in the restroom. It could be in your car. It could be in the living room. 
anywhere you can find that affords you the privilege of being alone with undivided attention, just focusing on God is a good place for you to pray. Go there regularly. Go there at that specific time you have decided to meet with God and you will watch your prayer life improve. Number three, avoid checking the time on your phone. Whenever you are praying, make the wristwatch or the wall clock your very close friend. To check the time on your phone is to risk being distracted. So if I were you, I would put my phone aside whenever it is time for me to pray. Number four, this is for those who may not have the privilege of putting their phones away while praying. Here is my advice. Why don't you put away every distraction? I'm not saying you should put your phone aside, but I'm saying minimize the distraction that might come in through your phone in your period of prayer. For instance, you may want to put your phone on silent. You may put want to put your phone on do not disturb. You may want to literally just like talk it away for that brief moment when you will pray. Now, so far, I have mentioned four things. Number one, have a prayer time. Number two, have a prayer place. Number three, make the wristwatch and the wall clock your friends. Move the phone away from your prayer place while you are praying. And number four, reduce the distractions that could come from your phone just in case you're unable to put your phone away. Number five, have a prayer partner or an accountability partner. There were times in my life that I had certain friends who prayed with me at specific times of the week. So we set, we first of all decided to pray together. And secondly, we picked a day and a time. So at every point where that time frame was due in the week, I could either place the call on my friend or she could place the call on me. And we kept that going for a very long period of time. Prayers of agreement are very good. And holding one another accountable is even better. You need to find a prayer partner today. Just that one person who speaks the word with you. That one person who stimulates you spiritually. And that one person who is who's deep. And that one person who's deep calls to your deep. That kind of friend is suitable as a prayer partner. Number six, attend prayer meetings, fellowship in church, attend all night meetings and prayer vigils. These are very important. They have the potency of stimulating you to more prayer. So do not abscond when you hear of an extended prayer meeting somewhere, an all night prayer vigil somewhere. These things are good for you. If you're struggling with your prayer life, you need to fellowship with other believers. You need to acquaint yourself with long and protracted fellowships and, and prayer times together with other believers. It will help your prayer life. The seventh point is almost like the opposite of the sixth, but you need to understand this in context. Now, this is the point. Do not hang your prayer life on another man. Do not wait until a man of God calls for prayer or a woman of God calls for prayer before you pray. So I am saying that your fellowship or your church or your local assembly may actually not even call for an all night prayer meeting for a very long time. But you need to learn to pray alone. You need to learn to call yourself to prayer. You need to learn to bring yourself to a point where you stop and you say, hey, now it's time to pray. And even though nobody is calling me to pray, I need to pray on my own. Do not wait until a man of God calls for a three day fast or another woman of God calls for a seven day uh, fast. You need to be able to stand on your own and pray alone. I hope you're not finding this point contradictory. What I said in number six is if you have the opportunity to participate in long and protracted periods of prayer, especially with other believers within a fellowship, please go right ahead and be a part of it. However, if that is not available to you, number seven says you need to be able to pray for protracted periods on your own. Don't be caught prayerless because you have not had the opportunity to fellowship with other believers or because your local assembly has not called out for a prayer meeting. I hope that is clear. Number eight is 
practice fasting. You need to add fasting to your prayers. What fasting does is that it prolongs your waiting power and your staying power. It just gives you that stability, that rectitude, that fortitude to keep on going, to pray longer because your flesh is deprived of anything and everything that sort of gratifies its weakness. And so you find yourself becoming stronger while you're praying because you are fasting. But of course, you need to get medical advice if you must abstain from food. Number nine, pray more in the spirit. I understand that not many people know what this concept is about and not too many people agree with it. But from experience, I can tell you that when you pray longer in the spirit, you are able to spend more time in prayer than when you pray in your understanding. And like I said in one of the scriptures I quoted earlier, which is 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2, he that prays in an unknown tongue speaks not unto man, but unto God. For no man understands him, albeit in the spirit, he speaks mysteries unto God. So when you pray in the spirit, you cannot be in doubt as to who you are praying to. You are still talking to God and even more directly. You do not know how you ought to pray, but it is the spirit who helps you. He understands that weakness in you. You can pray in your understanding all you want, but when you pray in the spirit, your mind is freed from its concerns and its worry as to whether it is praying the will of God. And you are able to just focus and you are enabled, you are strengthened, you are empowered and you just keep on going when you pray more in the spirit. Number 10, avoid the wrong posture in prayer. What is the wrong posture? A wrong posture is any position in which you put your body during prayer, which ultimately leads you into sleep. So I have not particularly said lying down to pray is wrong. Neither am I saying leaning on the wall to pray is wrong. But everyone must find that prayer posture that leads them into sleep and must avoid it. So for me, for instance, the moment my two knees touch the ground, I am off. I will sleep off. But that may not be the case for another person. This is literally on a case-by-case -case basis. You may pray more on your knees, while the other man may not be able to pray more on their knees. So find the posture that leads you to sleep and please do well to avoid this posture every time you pray. Number 11, practice retreat. You need to be able to take out time for a retreat, especially if there is something you really need to flog out with God in prayers. Retreat is the ultimate distraction stopper. I've done a couple of videos, a three-part series actually, on why you should go for a retreat, what a retreat is, and what you should do when you go on a retreat. If you go on a retreat, it helps you block off distractions for a longer period of time. And it also helps you to pray harder, Pray well and pray for a longer duration of time. Number 12, you need to be able to pray on the go. Many people think that this is impossible, but the moment you start it and you continue to practice it, it becomes a regular part of you. When you are in the car, pray. If you're driving, pray. If you're in, if you're commuting in a public transport, pray. When you're at home, pray. While you're doing the chores, pray. Whatever it is you're doing, ensure that you are praying, especially in the spirit. If you develop this and you grow in it, you find out that it becomes a habit for you. People around you may not necessarily understand what is going on. Now, let me ask you a question. Why do you think a man like Paul said, I thank my God, I pray in tongues more than you all? Well, some scholars have propounded that he probably prayed all through his journey. Every missionary journey, he prayed. While he was walking, he prayed. On the sea, he prayed. On the road, he prayed. And that can be your experience as well. Number 13. I recommend that you turn on your worship music, your music instrumental while you are praying. For some people, this has been a very healthy tool to journey in prayer. Some people believe that while they listen to another man praying, another man chanting, another man singing worship songs or a worship instrumental playing in the background, they get to pray for long duration of time. 
I think I quite agree with that. My only concern is that you don't need to become addicted to this practice. You don't need to get to the point where if you want to pray, then you must be listening to a chant. You don't need to become addicted to this practice. So get your playlist on, get it on your phone, arrange it properly on your phone. You need to be very deliberate about this so that your time of prayer is not interrupted by another song you did not intend to play. So get your playlist in order on your phone, name it well, and let it be applicable to the purpose for which you have designed it. So turn it on in prayer and you will find out that you will be able to pray for protracted periods of time. Number 14 you need to learn how to pray extensively after you have listened to a message. Let the instructions and the counsel that you receive from sermons which you listen to on your own propel you into prayer. You need to learn how to receive instruction from a message, find scriptures that align with it, and pray them into your spirit so that that word will eventually gain expression and become material in your life. 